Hello, I'm Manuel Tos, and today I will be talking about, uh, just a little bit rambling really, about my thoughts on the final American presidential debate of 2016, for those of you who don't watch this in the same year, which is unlikely because I'm not really putting these things into a playlist, so uh, you'd have to actually go through my uploads or see this as a suggested video to actually see it. Um, which is, which I guess makes sense because this is really a dated video in the sense of it. But actually, let's get into the debate. Um, I think that a lot of the questions that were asked in this last debate were a bit more uh, serious on the policy side of things. I think that the debate moderator did really well. Um, but actually, speaking about the debate moderator, it really bothers me how um, there's a big radio personality. He's called Michael Savage. And he actually trash-talked the debate moderator before the debate even started. Because he thought that the debate moderator was going to really be biased against Trump in a certain sense. However, I think that the debate moderator was really fair on this last debate. Now, as to who actually won, that's really up in the air. I personally think it's more of a tie uh, because Donald Trump, of course, has improved a bit. But Hillary Clinton has definitely uh, brought her A-game to the debate as well. Um, but a big thing that happened in the debate was uh, Donald Trump saying that the election could be rigged or the fact that He's, in fact, implying that it is, or saying that it is rigged. And then, a couple days later, I hear on the news, he said that if enough people come out and vote, that he'll win. So, the question is, does he actually think it's rigged? Because, on one hand, he's saying that it is rigged, and on the other hand, he's saying that he can win by having enough votes. So, if it's rigged, then he wouldn't actually be able to win by having enough votes. So, in a sense, I think he's really uh, trampling over his own words. Of course, this isn't anything new, because Donald Trump does this week after week, and a lot of his hardcore supporters don't even care that he isn't consistent on any of the issues, and has basically... Uh, flip-flopped on every single issue. Now, of course, Hillary Clinton isn't perfect on this either, uh, with her hypocrisy. Uh, when she says certain things, I'm hoping that, you know, Donald Trump, I don't root for him, but I, I don't root for Hillary either. But I at least hope that he calls her out when she says something weird uh, about him and that she also does. So he could say, and you don't do that, uh, in the sense uh, of, um, okay, I, I suppose I'm getting a little bit too rambly there, uh, asking you to follow my train of thought on that one. But uh, overall, I think it really has been slim pickings. And um, I heard one person who comment on, commented on the debate saying that, Donald Trump missed one of the biggest opportunities in American politics on this last debate in the sense that he could have laid out his party's, uh, his party's platform and conservatism and stuff like that, which is very important to the Republican Party. But of course, I wouldn't have expected him to lay out things like that because... It is very clear that Donald Trump is not a uh, conservative by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and of course, it also is interesting how um, Hillary Clinton goes after Donald Trump's past and then Donald Trump goes after Hillary Clinton's past. But the thing is that they both have past problems, uh, some of which are similar and that leads to this whole air of hypocrisy my goodness these people do not 
even care <laughs> that by by condemning the other person they are also condemning themselves because they have done the same things and on one side that's hilarious on the other side it's actually really upsetting because uh these people are the ones that have been selected by the democratic process to be their candidates now hillary clinton some say that the dnc had rigged uh the uh, primary against hillary clinton i mean for hillary clinton and against bernie sanders and I don't remember if, whether anybody else was still in the race uh, at the end of their primary besides Bernie. But the reason for that is uh, the leaked emails uh, from uh, WikiLeaks. But the problem with that I have with that is, is that certainly shows that the leadership conspired against Bernie. It doesn't show that the election actually was rigged because you might say, well, Hillary Clinton got all the super delegates but hillary clinton also had a larger popular vote uh in their primary she was literally more popular than bernie sanders so and by millions of votes as well so this isn't something where you might say the election was turned by a couple of thousand of voter frauds in west virginia or something uh, speaking about JFK, <laughs> okay, that's an entire other story, different story, but the fact is that even though Hillary Clinton literally got ahead in the popular vote on her party's primary, people still say that the election was rigged. Because maybe they say that the media coverage was unfair to Bernie Sanders. Or, and, of course, the media coverage isn't going to be fair. The media is going to pick their favorites, uh, which has happened with uh, the Republican side as well. So, you you could say that it is, if, if you say that it's rigged on the Democrat side because of that, and it's also rigged on the Republican side because of that. I mean, look at Sean Hannity. He's really in the bag for Donald Trump. And uh, there's other people who are favoring certain candidates. And I think that's okay for individuals to favor certain candidates as long as you keep the facts. And But, but this also lends to another problem where you have unfair coverage of certain candidates for example uh, all the different candidates have uh, polls on how popular they are uh, when the primary starts and some candidates might just get less coverage because at the start of the uh, of the primary they're low on a lower magnitude of popularity and that will then continue throughout the entire campaign to the point where they just drop off because they had a lot less coverage as opposed to donald trump who was well known throughout the entire country before he even announced his candidacy which means he had a lot of name recognition and a lot of media focused on him to the point where he didn't even need to pay much money for uh, media attention because people just flocked around him. Uh, same thing with Hillary Clinton. Everybody knows who Hillary Clinton is. And not that many people knew who Bernie Sanders was before the election. So I wouldn't say that the media coverage alone was rigged against Bernie Sanders uh, in the same sense that it wasn't rigged against those who weren't Donald Trump. But because these people were more popular to begin with, the media decided to cover them more. Uh, which means that if you are well known at the start of your campaign, you are more likely to stay well-known throughout your campaign. This is incidentally why uh, 
people like Marco Rubio and uh, what's his name, the the surgeon. They both were high because they had been seen on national news and stuff. And Ted Cruz was also well known among uh, more cons constitutionalist conservatives. Of course, Donald Trump doesn't know what's in the Constitution. Well, actually, he does because he uses it to uh, get uh, his eminent domain on people. Which I think is really an abuse of it, um, the way Donald Trump uses it. I don't think it should be used for private purposes, as in business. Uh, I think eminent domain should really be used as sparingly as possible and only when it's necessary and as such it should never be used for the private sector ever uh, of course Donald Trump has used it uh, for those of you who are not familiar with eminent domain eminent domain is uh, when it's, it's a constitutional thing that the US government can go and take somebody's land away and of course uh, compensate for the person for the land not that the compensation isn't it is the best uh, i don't think a lot of times it would cover an equally valuable uh, home that is on the land but the government can take away somebody's land and the reason for that is so that the government can uh maybe construct vital infrastructure or do something that's really important for the military and stuff like that such as building a road between two towns and somebody has there's a guy that has this big ranch in between and you need to uh, cut a swath through that in order to build the road and that's where eminent domain comes in now some people now of course in recent years it has been really abused with people just taking other people's land well getting the government to take people's land they crony up to the government they get their lobbying on and then they take somebody's land in order to build a hotel or something i mean my goodness donald trump how could he but uh, Hillary Clinton has her own problems uh, with uh, new leaked emails coming out about um, how how she uh, was against the Catholics. Now, of course, I personally have to say I don't care what Hillary Clinton thinks about the Catholics. I'm not going to vote for her anyway. And it doesn't matter to me what she thinks about the Catholics, as long as she doesn't want to kill all of them, which is pretty bad. I mean, I, I think people should have their opinions and should be able to speak their opinions. But that being said, I don't think people... Uh, the thing about WikiLeaks is that it's one of those things where I wouldn't encourage hacking of people's private information because I think that really violates their privacy uh, and as a sense I'm not defending Hillary on this I'm saying that it's against uh, the laws of, not laws but the me the common decency to do that it is just something unethical that I find highly unethical to hack somebody's personal information uh, I also find doxing people to be highly unethical and etc but that being said the information now is in the open so we can't cover it up anymore and we have to deal with it so we have the information and of course who is surprised about all these things and who is surprised about the other uh, things about uh democratic party um doing some voter fraud nobody's surprised uh, for those of you who live in other countries, you might be surprised because you, you don't you might not hear much about this. But it is well known that the Democratic Party, as a party, not as the people in the party, but the party itself, goes and uh, and does 
a significant amount of voter fraud, um, which is why um, when one of my relatives died, uh, my family chose not to put that in the obituaries because they knew that if they did, somebody might take this person's, uh, somebody might steal my dead relative's identity and use it for voter fraud, which has happened and does happen, which uh, is a problem. So, and I hear reports of this uh, in the, in 2012, in 2008, uh, going back to JFK, apparently his party was doing that way back then as well. And I think it's a problem and it, it shouldn't be something that's happening. Of course, that's not saying that Republicans have never done voter fraud because it does happen. I just don't think it happens uh, in as frequently and in such a concerted top-down effort as it does in the Democrat Party. You hear these things about people voting on this machine and then they look at the output from a machine and it has changed their vote. It has changed this person's vote. So let's say it's uh, maybe 2012, you vote for Mitt Romney and the output says you voted for Obama. And that could really, really make somebody upset. But of course, uh, it's one of those things that's also difficult to investigate because uh, voting is such a confidential thing that um, people aren't really allowed to look into too much of that things. But it might be that a lot of these machines are easily hackable. And that is a big problem. Uh, another thing you hear is when uh, a voting uh, area gets 100% for one party, which is statistically almost impossible, and really begs some questions about what happened. And then maybe you might go in there and people will say, well, I actually voted for somebody else. And that is not something that you want to hear. Or when you hear uh, people bussing in voters from the, many of which aren't eligible. They just bust them around and they practically handhold them through the voting process to make sure that their vote goes into the right box, um, which is a problem. Now, here in Florida, where I live, recently, uh, I, think, I forget who it was, but I think it was the Democrat Party, they asked for um, f to accelerate uh, certain people's voting registrations, um, people who were late to register to vote, I suppose, or to have them verified at the polls. Now, one might say, well, of course we want these people to vote, but the problem is, if you accelerate these things, and if you don't do these things through the process that has pre-existed the election as in these people could have done this thing months ago they could have gotten registered quite a while ago through the regular process if you if you allow these people to change this then some problems arise because then things will be done hastily and sloppily and some people who might not have been eligible to vote uh, in fact they are they are suggesting to do this for several thousand people. These people might vote anyway, which uh, is a really big problem. Because then you end up with having voter fraud. Now, of course, what makes this even worse is that Florida is a swing state or a state that uh, a lot there's a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans uh, so, on the binary system, it could go either way. 
I, I don't know exactly the polls at the moment on which way Florida is leaning, but I know that nationally, uh, nationally Hillary is in the lead on votes, which, uh, not votes, uh, in, um, in the polls. Now, of course, there, uh, I think McMullen is in lead in Utah. Uh, McMullen is an independent candidate who uh, has uh, American conservative views. It's important to emphasize that uh, when I say conservatism, I'm talking about American conservatism, which is a lot different from uh, British conservative views or French conservative views. Um, just like when I say liberal, uh, it's, it can mean a lot of different things in the U.S. You can talk about classical liberals, uh, which uh, would be more in the line with uh, what a lot of conservatives are and libertarians, um, a lot of Tea Party people. And then you can say liberal in the sense of uh, the, um, the Democratic Party and... Uh, the Socialist Party or other uh, left-leaning areas where it's more in a sense of um, of a different type of egalitarianism. So there's two different types of egalitarianism. There's a type where everybody is treated equally under the law, and then there's a type where everyone is insured equality under the law, not, not under the law, but by the law, in the sense where equality of, um, of uh, legal status or equality of, the f of um, outcome or equality of putting in the, uh, of forcing an equality in, uh, on the start. Uh, it's equality of, um, I, I forget what it's called, but the one is a sort of more communist ideology, uh, which is, or nanny state in its, uh, in its, uh, diet version, uh, which is more in line with the Democrat party and the socialist parties, and possibly the Green Party, and of course uh, the neoconservatives in the Republican Party who uh, were Democrats at some point but wanted a more aggressive foreign policy, which is why they became Republicans. But in spirit, they are mostly Democrats, sort of like George Bush. Uh, he's, he has neoconservative views. Um, I, I think uh, George... W. Bush, that is. Um, I don't know about George H. W. Bush. He may or may not. But uh, th that's another story. Uh, so, and then the other type of con the other type of egalitarianism is where everybody has these certain rights, and they're not going to be denied to everyone. Everybody has uh, the certain rights and liberties. Um, basically more on the um, United States Bill of Rights as well as uh, so certain amendments which deal with people's rights, such as the 13th Amendment, uh, which uh, deals with slavery in the U.S. Speaking of slavery, let's actually go way off topic here and talk about the U.S. Civil War. There is, the U.S. Civil War was not, in principle, about slavery. Um, it was about the reason that uh, the southern states seceded was because they wanted to do things that the majority of states did not want them to do. One of those things inclu included slavery. They also didn't want tariffs uh, to be put on them because uh, they were big on exporting stuff like cotton which was a major crop in the American South. Um, so they wanted to have their states' rights. They wanted to 
be able to do things without the federal government stepping on their necks doing it. And that is why they seceded. Now, one of these things was uh, slavery. Now, of course, this isn't, this still doesn't mean that it was about slavery because you had states that didn't secede that uh, were in favor of slavery. And that is um, another interesting thing to look at. So, that's, uh, I think my speech is slowing down a little bit, but uh, they didn't secede and they were still in favor of slavery. So slavery wasn't the primary issue of it. Um, now, then the North wanted to keep the country united, uh, which was their big rally cry, which is why uh, for a while the Republican Party, which was uh, in charge of that, the Republican Party, uh, by the way, was found, hadn't was actually pretty young at the time. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican president. Um, the Republic the Republican Party was founded sometime earlier um, in some town. I think most of its founding members were um, black, and its primary issue, or at least its uh, biggest issue at the time, was the abolition of slavery. Um, so it became really big on that, and it eventually absorbed a number of other parties, including the Free Soil Party and uh, what remained of the Whig Party, which had fallen apart over time. But uh, eventually, Abraham Lincoln signed an Emancipation Proclamation, which... Uh, didn't free all the slaves, it freed the slaves that were in the states that had seceded. Although that still might be a simplification of what it actually did. So, my point is, it wasn't about slavery. But anyway, back on track. Um, the election, it's, it's not good. Um, and, okay, I talked about Hillary a lot. Uh, just now about what the Democratic Party was doing uh, in Florida and how various kinds of voter frauds occur. But let me actually go back to Donald Trump on this. And some say that Donald Hillary Clinton says that Donald Trump is a puppet to the Russians. Now, I wouldn't go to as far as to say that he's a puppet, but it is true that Donald Trump winning the election is within Russia's interests. Now, Russia recently has been gearing up for what could possibly be a major war uh, in the sense that they did this emergency drill that involved millions of people. They are also calling back uh, Russian nationals from throughout the world to get into Russia. Uh, all of these things... Look, and they've also recently uh, been a bit more aggressive in their foreign policy, especially in uh, Ukraine and Syria. Now, all of this has the look of it that Russia is gearing up for a big war. Now, of course, this isn't a surprise um, to me anyway, because I think we're really getting close to another world war is almost overdue. I think somewhere in the next 20 years we'll have another big war. And hopefully that will deal with uh, race issues in the United States. Because the way race issues went in the United States was uh, you had, the, of course, in the 1860s, slave, the, the um, slaves were freed and then in the south a lot of people um i think it was the southern democrats they enacted or the dixiecrats they enacted the um jim crow laws which were laws that were supposed to enforce this segregation in the american south uh now in in the 60s the um there was the civil rights movement, and in the 70s, they accomplished their goals. And at that point, uh, 
all the different ethnicities had equality under the law. So in the 80s and 90s, race wasn't a big issue because people, I think people were a bit more individualistic in that time. There was a lot of emphasis on the rugged ind individualism where people thought of themselves as individuals rather than as part of a group. So race wasn't as big an issue back then. But now, uh, pe people are getting a little bit more collectivist in how they think of themselves as parts of groups. And that is bringing back uh, the problems of race that I think actually uh, race relations are worse now than they were in, let's say, the 90s. People care a lot more about race than they did back then. And I think that all has to do with an increase in collectivism and people thinking of themselves as groups and as distinct groups, which uh, really lends itself well to the racists, um, as it did in the back in the 1930s and 40s uh, with um, uh, Germany at that time. But uh, I'm not saying that we're heading towards another Hitler or something like that. Um, but what I'm saying is that if we have another big war and the people with their collectivist mindset will uh, unite, in a sense, uh, behind their leaders, um, the way that uh, society works uh, when they have a more collective mindset and they are confronted with uh, an outside conflict is uh, all the groups that are compatible, uh, at least compatible with the leadership to some degree, will uh, unite. And all the ones that aren't will be destroyed. And we see that with um, the 1940s Germany, uh, where the group that united the country uh, was, of course, uh, the Nazis, which meant uh, since they were a very divisive group, a lot of other groups were uh, oppressed because of that. So hopefully, whichever group unites uh, the U.S. in front of this coming world war will uh, be a very inclusive group that... Uh, has room for everyone and hopefully that will then resolve the race issues because then people will have been united into this group and they will then see each other's hopefully as equals and hopefully we can all leave this these race issues behind so i don't think that any of these race issues that are happening in the u.s right now are going to be resolved by um by legislature or uh, or restricting people's freedom of thought, people's freedom of expression, I think it's going to happen through uh, uniting in a war. Just like in the American Civil War, uh, various groups in the American North united uh, against the South, which then led to the South being uh, a, uh, an, a sort of more divided group, uh, a group that was a bit more divided from uh, the North and the West for some time, until the 1940s when people began to unite a bit more. But of course, this di didn't really affect the African Americans too much because they were still uh, they were still not equal under the law, which, uh, when more individualist times began in the 1960s, uh, people wanted their individual liberties. But anyway, this is getting all really theoretical at this point, so I think it's a great point to stop. Uh, hopefully, comment anything you like. Just comment. I like to hear what you think about this. Uh, this isn't any serious video, so I'm not really 100% serious on this. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. So thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all, 
or you'll be hearing me next time. Animal Toast over and out.